Hello there, people from Earth. Today we're here to talk about Dragon Ball Super Episode 99. Show them Krillin's hidden strength. Mitsetsu keru kurimi no soko jikara. As we left off from Episode 99, everybody's in shock and awe at Universe 9's erasure. So we spend a big chunk of the episode of everybody talking and everybody in shock about that. But one thing I thought was the most interesting about this whole thing was Goku bringing up Zami-chan and Zeno erasing Trunks' future. And I was thinking, why would he think to bring that up now? Like, what's the point? Obviously, yeah, hes they've seen it before. Are they just trying to remind us? Or is it foreshadowing things to come? Like, is Zeno a prominent theory? Is Zeno actually Zamasu? I don't know if I really like that theory right now. I, I think Zamasu should remain dead. But who knows, there could be some interesting stuff in there to kind of diversify this tournament as time goes on. And I also like 17 and 18's, you know, back and forth, them talking to each other and bringing up the unlimited energy thing. And it made me hope that there is a brother-sister kind of team up in the future going forth. And when the action finally picks up again, Vegeta sees Hit and starts going after him. Now this shit got me pumped, because I'm like, oh yeah, Vegeta and Hit rematch, hell yeah. But then fucking Winnie the fucking Pooh gets in the way and starts fighting Vegeta. By the way, Vegeta goes Super Saiyan to go fight Hit, like he knows he needs Blue in order to fight Hit. Didn't bother me anymore, it's just a side thought. But then he starts fighting Batamo and kind of adopts Goku's strategy of, oh, he doesn't take any damage, maybe I'll hit him some more. <laughs> so I thought that was funny, and another thing I thought was funny is Vegeta's face right here. Good stuff, eh? So Vegeta has a cool strategy of tying Botama's arms up. Apparently he's like made of a balloon or something like that. I guess he kind of seems like he is sort of balloonish. Um, and then Megeta sneaks up on Vegeta by stomping <laughs> on the ground as loud as he could. How Vegeta did not hear that, I do not know. <laughs> um, but yeah, during this whole thing, I'm like, oh, Hit was just standing right there. Where is he when Vegeta's like carrying Botamo off, tying his arms up? I was expecting Hit to kind of sideswipe Vegeta at this point, but instead Mageta jumps in. You know, there's a lot of stuff in this tournament where this happens. Like, there's a character in one spot, and one moment, and then the next thing you know, they're somewhere else. So that's kind of interesting. It's like they change their mind on fighting somebody and decide to go somewhere else to fight somebody else. So we go to the Universe 7 team. They're in their group as usual. Uh, Bird Thing is kind of fighting them. Piccolo takes off his weighted clothing for some reason to fight a Bird Thing that Krillin and Roshi can take on. By the way, these aren't things that I like hated. These are just kind of side thoughts and things that I thought. And mostly I think they're just kind of humorous. So Gohan has a really awesome moment of saving Krillin. I don't know if he really saved him, but he blocked a blast. That was a really cool moment. And then Roshi gets the point after Krillin does his Kienzan against the bird's wings. I thought that was really cool that they gave Roshi a point there when he took that opportunity to Kamehameha the bird out of bounds. Um, so then we cut back to the cool rematch between Megeta and Vegeta, and they have Botamo and Megeta teaming up against Vegeta, so this is pretty cool. It's really interesting. I would still rather have a hit Vegeta rematch, but this is still pretty fun. And I like how they're diversifying these fights to keep everything interesting and fresh. You know, in terms of the choreography, the strategies that all the universes and all the characters are using, it's pretty cool. And then 18 is fighting this wolf guy, with pretty much no trouble, she hits him down, and she literally thinks that he she killed him, but he's really playing dead, but then he starts doing these thousands of key blasts, and during this scene, I was like, okay, I get it, she's being overwhelmed by all these key blasts, but it seemed like she was beating him, like, pretty easily, so, like, how strong are these key blasts, and furthermore, does she have a key barrier? Maybe she could do her key barrier. But she gets knocked out of bounds and she's saved by her hubby in a really awesome moment. And then they have what I was really hoping for, the husband and wife, 18 and Krillin team up against this guy. Um, so they're doing that key blast back and forth and the guy's dodging, that was awesome. And then Krillin's even hitting this guy. So now this is showing off Krillin's powers, which the title is saying his hidden strength. I don't know if it's really his hidden strength, I don't feel like we really got a chance to see his hidden strength in this. I don't feel like he got, like went all out in this. Anyway, so he's getting shots on this guy and seemingly hurting him 
Whereas before, Android 18 was getting shots on this guy and seemingly hurting him too. But then he was pushing her back with the energy blast, so maybe, I guess, Krillin is very, very strong after being retired for so many years and then training back up. Good job, Krillin. Pretty cool stuff there. Um, so they out the wolf guy, then this really cool guy, blind guy, comes in. We don't know he's blind yet at this point. So he kicks Krillin, and then... Um, Krillin's like, okay, time for my ultimate technique, Solar Flare times 100. We get a little humorous snippet of Roshi getting his sunglasses taken by Krillin. He, Krillin gives them to 18, does his Taiokan times 100, and it fails miserably because the guy's blind. How funny is that? And he, he sees by smell. This guy's pretty interesting. I liked him. And uh, I liked his design and his style and everything, his fighting style. Uh, and so Krillin's like fighting him. He decides to fight him alone, and he's fighting him, and he beats him by shoe. <laughs> he throws his shoe in the guy's nose. <laughs> you know, overwhelms his sense of smell. How gross is that? <laughs> That's really funny. I guess Krillin is just becoming Bacterion at this point in time. But yeah, Krillin does a really cool Kamehameha against the guy and outs him. And he's celebrating, and everybody's happy, happy, joy. And then Frost shows up and tails the crap out of Krillin, knocking him out immediately. How anticlimactic. Like, this was seriously so disappointing. Of all the hype we've given Krillin, he had those multiple of episodes of, you know, getting over his fears, saying, okay, I'm gonna train back up and everything after becoming, you know, a police officer and everything. And he gets out by somebody just sneaking up on him and hitting him once. Like, I really would have loved it if he had a major struggle against Frost, you know, because it would have really shown his character growth because in the previous episodes, he was going up, up against the people who killed him and the person who killed him at one point was Frieza and Frost is the twin universe of Frieza. So that would have been awesome for Krillin's character to have that chance to overcome his fears and fight the crap out of Frost and even have a team up with 18 and Krillin, and then Krillin gets out by Frost just plain overpowering him. But no, we get a super anticlimactic scene of Frost just knocking him out, and then disappears immediately. What is up with disappearing immediately? He does some sort of key blast smoke bomb? Like, why? Why didn't he attack 18? He should have just started fighting her. But no, he just left i guess he decided not to fight 18 for some reason he's like i'm i'm not interested in fighting you i'm gonna go fight this random person over here i guess so anyway that was kind of weird i was kind of disappointed in the whole krillin knock i was kind of disappointed in the whole krillin being knocked out i'm sure i'm not alone here i'm sure a lot of people were disappointed in this i was also disappointed in the amount of time that we had for krillin like basically half of this episode the pacing is really weird in this like it's going super super fast right now so i feel like we should have had or focused on krillin a little bit more to really you know get us into this little side story of him and 18 and their like dynamic duo of fighting different people so that we kind of get a little bit more time to invest in what's going on in them and their situation. Like I said, it would have been awesome to have a really cool struggle with Frost in that. And then maybe Gohan sees him, tries to go help, but he gets sidetracked by another character. So the other Universe 7 guys are not able to go help Krillin in his time of need. Anyway, that would have been awesome. Uh, in the next episode, Goku is fighting Khalifla. This is very interesting. I'm wondering if Goku's gonna eliminate her? Probably not. Kale obviously goes Berserker Broly mode. I'm thinking they're probably going to focus on that for half an episode. It seems like in this Tournament of Power, the main story of each episode is focused on for maybe half the episode. It's very interesting. Um, so they have this shot of Hit and Jiren. It's probably separate or maybe it's not. Maybe they're hyping up a Hit versus Jiren kind of thing. And as if Jiren hasn't been hyped up enough, they're gonna have him defeat Hit like easily or something stupid like that. I would not like that. It is definitely a Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z trope to do something like that. Usually Vegeta's the one getting his ass handed to him. But it'll be cool to have a Hit Jiren match anyway. So even though I was hoping for a Vegeta Hit rematch, that would have been awesome. But it doesn't seem like we're gonna get that. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the episode. Thank you for watching the review. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
more cool videos to come. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and as always, take it easy.